so the classification of the elements so the arranging of the elements into the different groups on the basis of the similarities and the properties so there are uh, so many elements are present in the nature so each element is having a different different characteristics so based on their properties similar in the properties we have arranged in the periodic table so the classification of the similar elements into the groups so if the uh, we have made the uh, group by how many electrons are arranged in the outermost shell so based on that we have classified into the groups so sodium is having one electron lithium is having one electron in the outermost shell so we have placed the lithium sodium and all in the same group magnesium is having a two electrons in the outermost shell beryllium is having a two electrons in the outermost shell so we have arranged those or all in the second group so the group number will tell you how many number of electrons are there in the outermost shell so as for now there are 114 elements or we know about that so out of this we are having 92 or the natural elements then from 93 onwards it's a man-made elements because the proton numbers and the neutron numbers makes the nucleus it's very high so it is not occur in the nature so they we call it as a artificial elements the early attempts to classification of the elements so in earlier days they have found out the so many elements sodium chlorine fluorine hydrogen and all so they don't know where we have to classify this so they had a basic problem that how to arrange these elements so they have made the so many hidden trials in that so in this the earliest attempt to classify the elements was grouping so how they have made the grouping is one is the metals and the non-metals so the metals and all they have classified in one group the non-metals and all they have classified in the another group but the defect in this classification has there is a no place for the metalloids so what is meant by metalloids so it's having a character of both metals and the non-metals so the only they have made the two groups they don't know where they have to place this metalloids so which were discovered the later so the next attempt is that Dobernier so this is the another one Dobernier's triads Dobernier's classified elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses into the groups of the three elements called the triads okay so what he has done is so Dobernier's triads so Dobernier classified elements in the increasing order of the atomic masses so what is that atomic masses atomic masses is nothing but the uh, it's having a uh, protons and the neutrons so the combination of the protons and the neutrons so they have arranged in the order of the atomic mass numbers so in the classified into the groups of the three elements so lithium sodium potassium so what they have done over here is so the lithium is 6.9 and the potassium is 39 so what they have done is so they have uh, made the average so once they have made the average they'll get the 23 so they thought that okay the sodium will be present in between so this calcium is 40.1 and barium is 137.3 if these two elements if we are getting the average we'll get 88.7 so it's the near to that the strontium we are having so they placed the strontium in between the calcium and the barium so for the chlorine it is 35.5 and the iodine is 126.3 Nine. so both of them 35.5 plus 126.9 they have made the average they are having getting the uh, 81.2 so near to that is bromine is having 79.9 so they have placed the bromine in between the chlorine and the iodine but this is not suited for all the elements so this is what the problem they have faced this is applicable for only these three groups so in each triad the atomic mass of the middle element was approximately equal to the average atomic mass of the other two elements but still they have made the find out some of the difficulties in this so they think that okay so this is not the way we have to arrange the elements in the order the next one is new lens octaves so what is mean by the octaves octaves is nothing but the notes of the music 
So now we are having a Sari Gama Pada Nisa. So there are eight Swaras. So here also they have done the same thing. Sari Gama Pada Nisa. So they have arranged the uh, elements in the order. So Newland classified the elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses into the group of eight elements called the octaves. So hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So in that time, they don't know about that. Actually, after fluorine, they have they have to get the neon. So in that time, the neon was not discovered. So they have even helium is also not discovered. There is a no noble gases they have not discovered. So they have arranged like in this order. So the note of music. So they have arranged just like that, like increasing the atomic mass. Increasing atomic masses. So there were the similar properties. So what is the thing is, so sari gama pada ni sa. So the first one and the last one swaras are the same. Here also they thought that, so the hydrogen and the, but here they have faced the problem. Chlorine and chlorine, uh, chlorine resembles the same property, but the cobalt and the nickel, this one, it's not having the same property with the fluorine and the chlorine. Again, here also they have faced the same problem. So lithium, sodium, potassium, or both three are having the same properties, but the copper. So copper is not having the same property, resembles to this. Then here, beryllium, calcium, uh, beryllium, magnesium, calcium. So the zinc. So the zinc is not following the same property of these things. So in this one, they have uh, the defect of this classification is so the, all the known elements, they have whatever they have known, whatever in that period they have uh, discovered, they have put like this. But there are some of the elements which they have missed it, actually. There was no ga noble gases they have not uh, discovered. And some of the elements in between, uh, say, for example, the titanium and all, they have not discovered. So they don't know how to arrange these elements. So some of the elements have the different properties. So they have made the fluorine, chlorine, bromine. So these three are having the same characteristics. These are all the halogens. And also these are all the non-metals. But the cobalt and the nickel are the metals. That is the transition metals. They can able to change their oxidation states. But they have placed these elements in the non-metal, this one. But this is not following their order. Iron is having a properties similar to that of the cobalt and the nickel. So the iron they have placed over here, but the iron, cobalt, nickel are having the same kind of the properties. But it is not matching with the above one, the fluorine and chlorine. So these are all the defects they have noted in the new lens octave. So this is also failed. The next order of the elements is the Mendeleev's periodic law. So this Mendeleev's has given some of the idea to the periodic table. So he has arranged a little bit that, uh, okay, if the some elements are not discovered, he has given the space for that. But he, he found out the properties of the unknown element over here. So the Mendeleev's periodic law states that the properties of the elements are the periodic functions of their atomic masses. Okay, so actually he has done one little mistake over here. Instead of the atomic masses, if he could have arranged in the atomic number, he could have achieved the periodic table. But what the same mistake he followed from the previous observers. So he also arranged it in the increasing order of the atomic mass. So which is like that we are writing, right? The 16.949. So these are all the atomic masses. So, but he arranged a little bit very correctly. So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cerium. So these are all the one which is having a similar properties. They have put it in the same group. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. So this also it's having the same uh, characteristic reactions. So this also they have put it in the second group. The third group, boron, aluminium, and the yttrium. So they have placed in the same group. But he, Mendeleev, he's a scientist. So he doesn't know what is the element is over here. So it's not yet discovered that time. 
so but he can able he has found out very correctly about that density so what could be the atomic mass and what is the melting point boiling point what would be the color how about the reactivity so he able to find out all the stuffs over here but he cannot able to discover that element that element was nothing but the gallium after uh, this after they found out the element about gallium so they have just matched with his uh, findings so it was exactly matched over here then he has made the carbon silicon titanium zirconium and all in the same p group and nitrogen phosphorus vanadium and all but still he has faced some of the problem over here is the transition series he has made this one but still the titanium vanadium chromium manganese so these are all the metals okay so but they have placed in the non metals group so still it was unmatched over here so again this Uh, arrangement of the elements in the periodic table is also failed so the next one is the mendeleev's periodic table so that he classified the elements in the increasing order of the atomic masses and similarity in the properties for example how the uh, suppose he has taken the water cold water so how the metals are reacting with the water so what is the formula we are getting so how many and atoms are reacting how many moles of the atoms are reacting in the reaction so based on the properties he has made this uh, uh, table so the formula of the oxides and the hydroxides was also based on about the classification of the elements so sodium forms na plus uh, uh, in uh, hydroxides it's from naoh so the sodium is having a plus one charge potassium also having the koh so potassium also in the plus one so he has made the plus one plus one charge in the same group so plus two in all in the same group but still he faced a problem with the transition metals because the transition metals are having a different oxidation states so still he is uh, confused that how to arrange this transition metals in the proper order so but he has given the horizontal rows called the periods still we are following the same thing periods and the groups so he has given the name periods and the groups periods are nothing but that so the horizontal rows so this horizontal rows left to right if you are moving in the periodic table so that we call it as a periods and the groups are nothing but groups are nothing but so top to bottom so how we are hydrogen lithium sodium potassium so this is nothing but the uh, uh top to bottom if you are coming so that we call it as a groups and the groups 1 to 7 had the two subgroups a subgroup and the b subgroup so here he has made the 1a and 1b then 2a and 2b 3a so he has made the subgroups over here so group 8 had the three rows of the elements elements have the similar properties they have made in the same groups that's what i said how the metals are how the elements are reacting with the oxygen and how the elements are reacting it with the water so based on the formula of the element so he has made into the groups there are some places left vacant in the table to accommodate the elements to be discovered in the future so he has given some space over here these are all the vacant spaces he has given so in that time that elements are not yet discovered merits of the mendeleev's periodic table so the elements were discovered on a more fundamental basis of their atomic masses and the properties yes merits so he has made the most fundamental basis he has used the atomic masses to arrange the elements in the periodic table and the spaces also left vacant to accommodate the elements to be he has not like that before in the previous cases they have arranged like this they have not even left a space for the undiscovered elements but in this case the mendeleev left the spaces for the it to discover the elements so 
he can able to predict the properties of the elements which helped in the discovery of the new elements yes he just predicted that what is the so that's what i said he has predicted exactly about the undiscovered element that is a gallium so after that they have matched with that finding so it's exactly matched with the same values the inert gases elements discovered later could be placed in the separate cooled without disturbing the table yes so in his uh, period also uh the noble gases are not yet discovered so the helium neon argon krypton xenon so there is a there is a no space over here so once they have found out about the noble gases so they have given the one more column over here and they have made that as a noble gases so these are all the merits of the mendeleev's periodic table next one is the defects what are all the defects in the periodic table is some elements are not arranged in the increasing order of the atomic masses so example the cobalt is placed before the nickel yeah so here actually it is 58.9 over here but the nickel is 58.7 so he could have placed the nickel over here and copper over here so this mistake he has done over here and the position of the hydrogen is not clear uh, sorry tellurium is placed before the iodine etc yes here also one more mistake is there uh, that iodine te yeah tellurium is 120 iodine is 127 but what he has done over here is iodine is exactly matching with the fluorine and the chlorine so that's why he has placed the iodine over here so he knows that iodine also forms the minus 1 charge and bromine also forms the same thing so he has placed these two in the same fluorine and chlorine group but the tellurium is having a 128 mass number but still he has not given the proper explanation for this but the tellurium shows the exact reaction like a, a chromium or the molybdenum so he has placed the tellurium over here and the position of the hydrogen is not clear because it shows the properties similar to the metals as well as the non metals yes so the hydrogen he has placed in the hydrogen he has placed in the group over here the first group he has placed <clears throat> but he has not given the proper explanation why he has placed the hydrogen in the first one because it is like a metalloid because hydrogen is having one electron in the outermost shell so what it will do is if it accepts the one electron if it accepts the one electron it become it will behaves as a non metal it forms the h minus one suppose if it lost the one electron in the outermost shell so it means that it behaves as a metals so both the properties are shown by the hydrogen so it behaves like a metalloid for explanation why he has placed it the hydrogen over here till now we are placing in the till now we are placing the hydrogen in the same group the position of the isotopes of the elements are it's not clear yes so the next one is the position of the isotopes what does mean by isotopes isotopes means so the atoms are having the same atom uh, same atomic number but different mass numbers that we call it as isotopes it means that uh protons it's having the same uh, number of the protons but different number of the neutrons but why he has not given the proper explanation of the isotopes is in his in his period the neutrons was not yet discovered so neutrons were discovered only in the year 1932 by chadwick the scientist so that's why he has got some doubt in that so why the atoms are behaving like this uh, because uh, the neutron they are having a different number of the new, neutrons so in that period he doesn't know what is that making a difference over here so chlorine is having different two chlorine atoms he has found it with the different atomic mass so how it is possible so he has not given the proper idea about the isotopes because the neutrons were not yet discovered yes this is the modern periodic law so which we are using as of now 
the modern periodic law states that the properties of the elements or the periodic functions of their atomic numbers okay so now what we have arranged over here is based on the atomic number we have arranged the elements so that gives a clear picture about the each and the every element for example the hydrogen then helium then lithium so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we have given according to the number of the neutron protons which is present in it so now this gives the clear idea so again the groups represents the same thing so the group represents that the same number of similarities in the physical and the uh, similarities in the chemical properties we have arranged in the same group and increase in the atomic number we have arranged in the order of the uh, periods so we are having as of now 18 groups group 1 to group 18 and the group uh, period 1 to 7 we are having so here we cannot able to place these elements over here this will disturb our periodic table so because of that we have placed the lanthanide and actinide series in the bottom of the periodic table so this we call it as a inner transition elements or f block elements okay so the periodic table of the elements so now hydrogen so we have placed over here alkali metals so these are all we call it as a alkali metals group 1 lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium so these elements we call it as a alkali metals so what is mean by alkali metals it means that it forms the base for example if the uh, sodium reacts with the oh it forms the sodium hydroxide if you test with the ph paper then you will be getting it. it's a basic nature so the ph is above the 7 so that's why we call it as the alkali metals it forms the alkali and also only the group 1 hydroxides or uh, chlorides or anything nitrates uh, sulfates even nitrite sulfide carbonate all the uh, compounds which is present in the group 1 are soluble in the water that's why we call it as the alkali metals then next one is the alkali earth metal so the second group we call it as beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium radium so these are all the elements forms the alkali earth metals earth in the sense we can able to see in the earth directly the calcium metal we can able to get it barium also we can in the metallic state we can able to get it but what these and all we cannot able to get the in the metallic state why because these metals are highly highly reactive in the periodic table these group 1 metals are highly reactive because they are having a one electron in the outermost shell they can easily lose that one electron and forms the positive ion so that's why the sodium potassium and all we have to store it in the oil or the kerosene because if you take it outside from the oil or the kerosene immediately it will react with the oxygen or the moisture which is present in the air and it forms the products and the potassium and all immediately it will even if it catches the fire when it reacts with the moisture because when it reacts with the moisture we'll get the hydrogen gas it's very flammable so that's why these elements we will not get it as a metallic state in the nature always we will get it as a compounds but these metals are comparative to the group 1 it is less reactive because it's having a two electrons in the outermost shell it has to lose the two electrons that's why uh, its reactivity is comparatively less compared to that of the group 1 so this this is also when they are uh, it shows the basic character that's why we call it as a alkali earth metals transition metals so these are all we call it as a transition metals okay what does mean by transition 
so the transition is nothing but it can able to change its oxidation number based on the available atoms so the copper can exist in the cu plus 1 as well as the cu plus 2 iron is available in the fe plus 2 and the fe plus 3 so they are having a different oxidation number so that's why we call it as a transition metals but the group 1 metals and the group 2 metals are having only one oxidation state that is plus 1 and the plus 2 so this transition metals are comparatively less reactive than that of the group 1 and the group 2 and uh, these metals we are using it in our day to day life so the iron we are using cobalt nickel copper so copper is a very good conductor of electricity so in our house and all we are using for the wiring and the silver we are using gold we are using so there are so many useful metals in the day to day life it's it's placed over here in the transition metals so next one is the poor metals so aluminium gallium germanium so these are all the ones we call it as a poor metals so why we call it as this one is because uh, uh, they are having a changing of the characters like that sometimes it will show the non metallic character and sometimes it will show the metal so these we call it as a uh, uh, no metalloids this we call it as a metalloids so which shows the characters of both metals and the non metals so aluminium is also actually aluminium actually it is a metal but sometimes when it is combining with the chlorine and all it forms the covalent character but it's combining with the oxygen it will show the basic character so because of this fluctuation so these metals or we call it as a no metalloids and the next one is the non metals so these um, elements which is present over here so this we call it as a non metals so the non metals are the one which can able to gain the electrons and it attains the stable outermost electronic configuration so these are all the non metals usually the non metals or exist in the uh, gaseous state example nitrogen oxygen the fluorine chlorine so these are all some of the elements exist as a uh, gases and uh, uh, this sulfur is a solid and the phosphorus is exist as a p4 so four atoms combines and it forms a molecule usually it exist in a diatomic or tetramolecular nature so whenever we are writing the oxygen we have to write as o2 and the n2 f2 so these are all we call it as a highly reactive non metal so that's why it exists as the diatomic state and the tetraatomic state and the noble gases so these are all the noble gases which is present in the last group of the periodic table so the noble gases are the one which is unreactive even at the room temperature or even at the high temperature why because they are having a complete eight electrons in the outermost shell so they have completed the octet configuration so there is a no need to gain or lose any electrons in the outermost shell so they have already completed so what is the need to gain or uh, to lose any electrons so that is why we call it as a noble gases or the inert gas inert gas means they do not react at all so always they will exist as a mono atomic gas so mono atomic mono means a single it will always exist as the single atom that to in the gaseous state so helium is a very 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 light dense gas so which we are using it to fill the balloons okay so the helium filled balloons what will happen it will just move upward direction why because in our earth we are having oxygen and nitrogen our atmosphere contains the 78 percentage of nitrogen and 21 percentage of the oxygen so compared to the helium oxygen and the fluorine are having a high density so this helium is a very very low density
so because of this so it's just if the balloons are moving in the upward direction because it cannot able to exist in the dense side so it always just moving in the upward direction next one is a rare earth metals so this is we call it as a rare earth metals because so see some of these elements are man made so these are all the man made usually this rare earth metals are radioactive in nature so what is mean by radioactive it is nothing but it will emit the rays because it it has to be more stable so that is why it will emit the rays either the gamma rays alpha rays or the beta rays then the nucleus will become the stable so their reactions are quite different from the our usual the metals and the non metals reactions because they are having a high uh, atomic mass even the more proton number so their reactions are quite different from the our normal reactions okay so this is the lanthanide series so this is the arrangement of the metals okay so previously we have given that 1a 2a and 3a 4a 5a so 1a what is this one what is this one indicates that uh the group number 1 if i said the group 1 it means that the one electron is present in the outermost shell the group 2 indicates that the two electrons present in the outermost shell 3 means 3 electrons are in the outermost shell 4 4 electrons in the outermost shell 5 6 7 8 so the group number indicates that how many number of electrons present in the outermost shell okay what is the period indicates so the period indicates that how many number of the shells the particular uh, element is having so that we can able to identify see for example now i am saying that so what is this this is the sulfur i am going to take this as a example sulfur okay so the sulfur is present in the sixth group so it means that it's having a six electrons in the outermost shell because it is present in the sixth group so and it is present in the 1 2 3 it is present in the period 3 so it's having the three shells so six electrons are present in the outermost shell in the self okay so now we will see the atomic number is 16 okay so 16 means it's having a 16 electrons totally so the first shell can occupy the two electrons the second shell can occupy the eight electrons so already the 10 electrons are over and the six electrons are present over here so 2 plus 8 10 10 plus 16 so totally 16 electrons are there so the six electrons which is present in the outermost shell so 1 2 3 it's having a three shells so from the period and the group we can able to identify the basic information about the elements modern periodic table so in the modern periodic table how we have arranged is based on the atomic number so what does mean by atomic number the atomic number is nothing but we uh, we can also call it as a proton number so if you are saying that carbon 6 is the atomic number means we can say that it's having a six protons in the structure six electrons in its structure but we don't know how many neutrons are there so if you want to find out how many number of the neutrons we should know about the mass number suppose if you are saying that this is a 12 okay so 12 is the mass number so how to find out how many number of new so mass number is nothing but mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons okay so now here the mass number is 12 so 12 equal to 6 plus n so n equal to 12 minus 6 so n equal to 6 the easiest way to find out the number of the neutrons is just to subtract 
here 12 minus 6 so we will be getting the 6 neutrons easiest way so another another one is carbon 6 13 this is the another element so here from the atomic number we can say that it's having a six protons six electrons so neutron is 13 minus 6 so seven neutrons okay so now here what is the difference between this and this so the mass number is varying but the atomic numbers are same here also it is 6 here also it is 6 the atomic number same but the mass number here is 12 and here it is 13 so what is the difference neutron is difference here it is 7 neutrons here it is the 6 neutrons so this we call it as a isotopes isotopes means the same element which is having the same atomic number but the different mass number so this we call it as a isotopes it means that alternatively we can say that same number of the protons but different number of the neutrons so in this periods we are having a seven periods of the elements so the first period so what is the first period so this is the first period so this period has this is the number one period this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six and this is seven so this is the period we call it as period left to right we call it as periods so in the first period we are having a hydrogen and the helium so there are seven periods so the first period contains the hydrogen and the helium so we call it as a very short period because it has only the two elements right so that's why it's a very short period the second period has the eight elements okay what is the second one so this is the second one lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon so lithium to neon we call it as a second one this we call it as a short period because it's having only the eight elements the third period also has the eight elements from sodium to organ so here this is the third period sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine organ so this third period also has the um, eight elect uh, sorry eight elements in this so this is also short period the fourth period has the 18 elements so it's, we call it as a long period because it contains the 18 elements over here so from here to here so why because the transition elements will start over here from 21 to 30 that is missing over here so that is why extra 10 elements are added over here in the fourth period so potassium to krypton so from here to here we are having 18 elements so this we call it as a long period the fifth period has also contains the eight elements from rubidium to xenon that also we call this is the fifth period or b is rubidium and ends up with the xenon so this is also contains the 18 elements called the long period the sixth period has the 32 elements it's a very long period cesium to radon called the very long period so cesium so here some of the elements we have to miss up so after lanthanum the cerium is present over here because we cannot able to insert then it becomes a very bigger one now it looks very nice so if you are involved over here again the blank space will come in the above one so the order of the arrangement will have up some problem so that is why this 14 and plus 14 plus 14 28 elements they have placed below the periodic table so uh, up to this one and this one in total the period six contains the 32 elements in it so this is a very long period the seventh period has the only the 28 elements so from francium to atomic number 114 so this is incomplete period so still the elements are yet to find out so because that's very very difficult so now actually they are man-made animals also we can say because uh, 
114 means just imagine 114 protons 114 electrons up up 114 neutrons so it's a very heavy nucleus is will be there so the presence in the nature is very very difficult so that is why the man may artificial elements so the scientist or making the element and make the protons and the neutrons and the nucleus and they are just finding out this elements usually these elements are called the radioactive elements because they want to stable the nuclei so they will always emit the rays the 14 elements each of the 6th and the 7th period are placed separately at the bottom of the table so the this one from lanthanum so here so here to here lutetium so here we have placed right so this we call it as a lanthanide series because after lanthanum we are placing it right so this we call it as a lanthanide series then after that after actinium the thorium and all we have placed below so this we call it as a actinide series so up to laurentium they have placed over here next one is groups so till now we have seen the periods how the seven periods are classified and how many elements we have placed what are all the names whether it is a short period or long period so we have given some names to that So next one is the groups so there are now 18 groups of elements which is present into the nine groups okay so they are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the zero groups okay so the group 1 to 7 has the subgroups each called the a and the b subgroup group 8 has the three rows of elements and zero group as a one row of the elements okay so now we are going to see what is that so the group a is a normal elements normal elements means it's having the one oxidation number we can able to predict that characters are not then the group b we call it as a transition elements so transition elements means we it can able to change their oxidation states based on the available atoms so the lanthanides and actinides are called the inner transition elements still actually uh, they are present in the f block f orbitals so that's why we call it as a inner transition elements it can also able to change their oxidation number next one is group 1 group 1 we call it as a, already we have seen this alkali metals group 2 elements we call it as a alkaline earth metals group 17 we call it as a halogens and the group 18 or the zero group we call it as a noble gases so in a group all the elements have the same number of the valence electrons so that's what i said so here so suppose if you are taking the lithium so lithium it's having a one electron sodium is also having one electron in the outermost shell potassium rubidium cesium francium so all these elements are having the only one electron in the outermost shell so that's why we have placed the 1a 1 group 1 the group number always indicates that number of electrons in the outermost shell yeah so the group 1 indicates that one valence electron group 2 elements indicates the two valence electrons group 3 elements indicates the three valence electrons so in a period all the elements contains the same number of the shells yeah in the period we have seen that how many number of the shells are present in that particular element that the basic information we can able to find out from the group number and the period number next one is the properties of elements in periods and the groups okay so first based on the valence electrons so in a period the number of valence electrons increases from 1 to 8 from the left to right and the number of the shells is the same okay so now they have given one example second period in the second period we are having a lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon okay so the a n means the atomic number so the atomic number of this 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 okay so easy means electronic configuration so here 
the uh, this this indicates that the three indicates that it's a proton number so the proton number is equal to the electron then it is in the atom atomic state so here we are having a three means it's having a three protons and the three electrons so always the first shell occupies the two electrons the second shell occupies the eight electrons the third shell occupies the eight electrons okay so now here the lithium is having the three electrons so out of the three electrons two electrons we have placed in the first shell and the one electron we have placed in the uh, second shell so beryllium beryllium is four so four electrons are present two electrons are present two electrons are present in the uh, first shell and two electrons are present in the second shell boron the two electrons are present in the first shell and three so carbon is having a six electrons so two electrons in the first shell and four electrons in the second one seven nitrogen two electrons are present in the first shell and five electrons in the second shell oxygen it is eight two electrons are present in the first shell and the six electrons are present in the outermost shell so fluorine nine so two comma seven so two electrons are present in the first shell and the seven electrons are present in the next shell that is the second shell neon two comma eight so if you see the neon it is completely filled actually so the eight electrons has to be present in the second shell second shell contains the eight electrons so this is completely filled that is why they are unreactive so there is no more electrons we can able to occupy and also there is a no need to lose any electrons so that is why the noble gases are highly stable now the valence electrons what is mean by valence electrons valence means how many electrons are present in the outermost shell so that we call it as a valence electrons so here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so the outermost shell is the second shell so how many electrons are there that we have to place it over here shells shells are nothing but that two because this is the first shell and this is the second shell this one so two 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 so these are all from the second period so second period indicates that it's having only the two shells so all these elements are having the two shells only the valence electrons are varying so that gives the the, uh, the group we are placed in the different groups group 1 group 2 group 3 like that based on the valence electrons so in a group so now we are going to discuss about the 1a group so in this we are having a hydrogen lithium sodium and potassium so an means atomic number one hydrogen is having one atomic number lithium is having three and uh, sodium is having 11 and potassium is having a 19 ec means electronic configuration so this is one electron right so one electron will occupy in the first shell three electrons are there in the lithium so we can split that three electrons the two electrons we have to place it in the first shell and one electron we have to place it in the second shell so 2 comma 1 and sodium sodium is having 11 electrons so two electrons in the first shell eight electrons in the second shell because the maximum number of occupancy in the uh, second shell is 8 so 8 electrons once it fills the 8 electrons next automatically we have to give the electrons in the next shell that is one electron we have to give in the third shell so potassium so potassium is having the atomic number 19 so two electrons can occupy in the first shell the eight electrons can occupy in the second shell then eight electrons in the third also we can able to fill the eight electrons so we are giving the eight electrons in the third shell so once it's completed 
the next four the first electron is moved to the fourth uh, shell so if you are seeing like this the outermost electrons are the same one 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 so only one electron are present in all these elements so that's why we have placed in the 1a so the group number always indicates that how many number of the valence electrons which is present in the outermost shell now next one is the shells okay so this contains the one shell this contains the two shell this contains the three shell one two three four four so the number of the shells increases in the So next one is the valency. So what does mean by the valency? Valency is nothing but how many number of electrons it can. So from we will get some idea. So how many number of the electrons the element can able to lose or the element can able to gain. So that's what we call it as a valency. So in a period, the valency of the elements increases from 1 to 4 and then decreases from 4 to 0. What does mean by that the increases from 1 to 4 decreases? So actually, the idea of this one is, so now the sodium is having an example. The sodium is having a 2, 8, 1. Okay, so these shells are completely filled. So we are not taken into the account. So we have to consider only the last electron which is present in the last shell. That's why we call it as a valence electrons. Valence means ability to lose or gain electron. That we call it as valence electrons. So one electron present over here. So actually the third shell can occupy eight electrons. So we know that as we know already, the helium, neon, argon, krypton and all, they are unreactive because they are having the completely filled orbitals or electron shells. But why these elements are reactive? Sodium is highly reactive, potassium is highly reactive, and all remaining other elements in the periodic table are reactive apart from the noble gases. Why? Because they are not having the stable, complete outermost electronic shells. That is why they are reactive. So the noble gases are the one unreactive because they are completely filled orbitals. That's why they are unreactive. So now the sodium wants to attain the stable outermost configuration. That is why they are reactive. So what sodium will do now? 2, 8, 1. One electron in the outermost shell. So the this 2 electron is present in the first shell. This eight electrons are present in the second shell. The one electron is present in the third shell. So now this is completely filled. First and second are completely filled. So the third shell contains only one electron. So what it will do? The third shell maximum occupancy is eight electrons. But sodium is having only one electron. So the easiest way only the elements will choose. So what LA sodium can do? It will lose the one electron. Instead of gaining the seven electrons, it is easy to lose the one electron. This is the easiest way. So it will not choose the gaining of the seven electrons. So once it loses the electron, so it becomes the two comma eight. So eight electrons are there in the outermost shell so that is a stable that's why the sodium uh, how sodium metal is highly reactive because they will likely to choose they will uh, remove the one electron in the outermost shell and wants to become the stable configuration that is very easy for the sodium to do it 
So the valency of the sodium is one. So like this, we can able to find out what is the valency of the each elements in the each period as well as the group. Suppose if the two electrons are present in this one, two electrons are present in the outermost shell. So it can able to lose the two electrons instead of gaining the six electrons. So the valency is two. See here, now we are going to take the example of the second period. So second period contains the lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So the atomic number is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now in this case, so the electronic configuration, they have splittered into the first shell and the second shell, they have placed it. Okay. So now here the valence electron is 1 over here. So the valency is, it can lose the 1 electron. So valency is 1. Here, it is having the two electrons in the outermost shell. So the choice is whether it has to lose the two electrons or it has to gain the six electrons. So now possibility is losing the two electrons. That's why the two electrons, it is placed over here. The valency is two. Now the three. So here, gaining the uh, losing the three electrons or gaining the five electrons. So again, the three is easy compared to that of the five. So that is why 